Hello, we are starting our new session. Um, I, we gave a, lots of introductions and there is a special on our channel, there is a special video with introduction. It's over 40 minute introduction where we explain everything. So please go there if you need the introduction. Um, today we invite for channeling, um, how do you say Yahweh? Yeah? Yahweh. Yahweh. I say in Russian it would be Yahweh, in English it would be Yahweh. Uh, the God, the Jehovah, the Creator. Uh, I recently met him through another psychic and uh, I we would love to continue the conversation. Uh, Jesus is obviously is uh, very welcome, Buddha and um, Sananda, Ashtar, Archangel, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron. Is, Metatron is very interested in talking about details of Atlantis and things like that sort. Any higher beings, El would be very welcome. Um, we, I proposed to resume of the hybridization program now on the volunteer basis. I proposed that to uh, work fit near the alliance of Pleiadians, uh, Yael, Arcturians, Lyrans, and one unknown species, which they don't, they didn't tell us which species is that. So we, we invite them to discuss the uh, resuming of hybridization, uh, hybridization program and this new species which, species which joined the uh, near Alliance, we invite them to introduce themselves. Um, John Lennon would be welcome again. It was so much honor to speak to him and if he wants to come through again we would love to uh, have a chat with him. We don't have any specific questions but it's always fun to talk to him. And um, Anybody with anybody positive with announcements, we want uh, very high vibration beings, and um, obviously I invite my my higher self to speak to me, my guides, uh, Nina, Peter. Uh, I would like to talk to them, and we have tons of questions for Lakesh. So Lakesh, Lakesh, you have you are behind the schedule. We have uh, the the list of questions grows for you, so. Uh, if you come, we, we would love to speak for about an hour asking questions from our uh, members of the site. And that's, um, fairies were great. Um, anybody with a poetry, anybody good with a poetry would be so welcome. We love poetry, prayers, and, uh, and blessings. Um, and that uh, unexpected positive things also welcome. choose to interfere, but it's okay with me. Do you speak to me choosing to interfere? The one known as Jim interferes with reptilian affairs. Oh. Okay. He's benevolent and he wishes well. He is. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, introduce yourself, if you may. Dishka. Hello. I am Dishka. I am a reptilian. I am not. Violent. Excellent. I am not hostile. Thank you for coming through. Conversations with reptilians bring a, lo a lot of new knowledge to us. We are not customs. You are not like us. But you are learning to be more like us. I am third or fourth dimension. I am third. Do you belong to the same race as the reptilian we spoke before? He didn't introduce himself. We are. Same race. We are. I see. Tell us more.
What's our major ignorance? Where are we most confused? What should we learn? You let too many emotions rule your life. That's right. That is where we are superior in some ways. Mm -hmm. We've learned to control our feelings. We have learned to bring our own hybridization program to you. Jim has spoken to at least a few of these people. Hybrids on Earth? That have reptilian hybrids. A hybrid DNA? Yes. I understand. He is telling them through the one called Lakash. Yes. How to deal with the particulates of our DNA. What's your advice to them? He should not say anything, just let it work naturally, but he has told them what to expect, which changes the program. I understand. But not many of your hybrids know this, so it changes only a small percentage of the hybrids. Yes. But we are adjusting with their programs to match the information. Very good. So I came up with a proposal that our hybridization programs should invite volunteers to donate their DNA into the hybridization program. They must give permission either consciously or subconsciously to us. Now we propose to, for that to be done consciously with fully informed consent. It is different. I understand. Because of their openness to alien species, they give permission for us as well. So times are changing. We want more information and we wish to do things on a volunteer basis. We don't want to get into full contract and not be to be able to get out of that. We are understanding of this, but it's not clear how this could be done through our species. Let's think about that. Obviously, I'm only meeting you, so I'm no, I, I haven't had the time to think about that. Uh, what is the purpose of your hybridization program? Our purpose is to find out how much our influence is on your bodies and minds. This is important because we would like to be integrated with you, but it would have to be able to also spawn unite with your people. What would be the advantage for us to have your... You would be much stronger. Uh -huh. You would be more emotionally fit. Uh -huh. You would be a greater specimen in the galaxy. Do you have telepathy? We have some telepathy. What percentage of your yell telepathy would, it, would that be? I cannot compare myself to you, Yael. Uh, to any known species. We are telepathic enough. Even children? Children. Children. Children 
are born with the abilities that adults have as well. Do you have technology to be telepathic? Technology. That would be what I am doing now. Is that what you mean? Uh, for you to be telepathic between each other, do you have to have a tele technological transmitter or is it natural? It is vibrational. Okay. So what would be the advantage for you to hybridize with us? You would be a much more fit species and we would be more multifunctional. Would you bring our DNA to your species or you just wish to, hi to create hybrids on Earth? We at this time have made several hybrids and we have used human DNA that we have removed to use for our own fertilization program on our world. Uh huh. This has not been successful as bringing reptilian DNA to humans. I understand. The human DNA seems to be absorbed more readily into our systems and has very little effect. I understand. We are trying greater amounts of DNA that we have recreated synthetically into our subjects. Excellent. I, are you familiar with Star Trek movies? Star Trek series? T television Star Trek series? We do not interact with your technology. But you can look it up, right? In the, in the, in the computer system, right? We only interact with appropriate technology. So in our Star Trek there are a few characters who are very logical and their emotions are repressed or absent. These are Vulcans and this would be Data. Jim knows that. Information Data. Data was an android in the... In the android. Yeah. In the movie. Synthetic individual. Yeah. Right, so the humanity is familiar with that idea of less emotions and more logic. And actually I like it. I like it much. I often tend to think about myself. I want to be like Data. I want to be very logical and I want to change my mind quicker than my emotions allow me. Calculations quickly. Uh-huh. On the other hand, on the other hand, humanity is very, loves very much our emotions. The way our brains work is much different than the way your brains function. We are able to switch much like what you speak. Calculations can come easier with less density of unneeded thoughts. Uh -huh. uh, why am I here? Oh, we can have a conversation about the hybridization problem. supposed to be here for instead of me. Oh, I see. Do you have poetry on your society? Uh, 
it is not unusual to speak in symbolic language. Can you read a poem for us? They are not for you. I understand. Uh, can you tell a story, your creation story? There is no creation story. What's the name of your species? I have to go. That's okay. Thank you for visiting. I have to go. Thank you for visiting. Yes. Such an unusual visitor for you. <laughs> Is it Lakesh? Yes. How are you? I am as well as I can be. Oh, nice. Nice to have you around. Thank you. Do you know any news which uh, it's worth announcing? Mm. Oh, there is ten... ten telepaths. Good news. Yes, ten tele, and uh, two of them are children. Uh -huh. Children. The last two uh -huh. were children, and that creates a small problem for them because they will be telepathic when they return to Earth as well. I understand. And they have been back a couple times, so they are not. Extremely telepathic with other humans, mm -hmm. more with you, you. Maybe they need to learn how I mean, to yeah. numb their telepathy. I don't think that there is a program of such a thing. <laughs> you, you either know, have it or you don't. <laughs> some people, I, you know, I cannot shut down my ears. I just listen to everything that comes around, and sometimes <laughs> it's a problem, especially when it's like too loud around. And other people have a talent of shutting down their ears and not listening to anyone. If they want to not to hear, they would, wouldn't hear. I see. So that's a beneficial trait which I lack. I imagine children are very adaptable. So maybe, as in learning telepathy, they learn, have to learn, uh, it would be beneficial for them to learn how to mm, close their telepathic link. Yes. Are you capable, your people, capable of turning off telepathic thing? If we are channeled away from telepathy with studies or other things, other thought patterns, in meditation, yes, med uh, telepathy is shut down during those periods of time. They can be turned back on or activated by someone asking a question uh -huh. or uh, someone appearing suddenly. Mm -hmm. It depends on your reaction to them. If you know who it is, you can actually just scan and say, oh, that's so-and-so, and you don't have to worry and go back mm -hmm. to where you were. But um, if it's someone you don't know, then you would be fully into that telepathic connection. So I recommend the telepath for the old 10 telepaths to practice shutting down telepathy and teach the children, because that will help the children to to pretend they're normal. Yes. I believe that they must be working on something like that. Mm -hmm. They would have to be. I know that they were very concerned about this. Also, uh, theater. Theater is an art. Mm -hmm. Being an actor is an art. And that art helps tremendously to live in a hostile environment. Mm -hmm. If you're becoming an actor, it becomes a game and a play. So. I would recommend to have theatric lessons in the colony for the children and it could be fun so they learn how to pretend, play pretend. Many children are so straightforward like I was that you know it's still difficult for me to pretend you know and to lie but you know there are games that teach you that 
and that mm-hmm. is a necessary skill for kid, ch- children who are telepathic, who know about the colonies, how to survive in hostile earth environment on the ground. I have just received from Nina mm-hmm. an, a notice that they are, whenever they encounter a telepathic moment, they are shut down, they become very quiet. Um, but they're working on a better way to do this. They, but they become very quiet when ever a tele, they become telepathic on Earth, so not to give away what is happening. Um, there are better ways. Yes. But this is the first way that they have encountered that it works for the child not to be in trouble or not to give away too many things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is, it's a, a psychotic reaction, not psychotic, psychiatric reaction. Yeah, blocking is not the best way, no. obviously, but... Oh, it's not blocked, it's just they become silent there. It's like hypnotized to be silent. I see. So I recommend theatric lesson, theatrical lessons. Okay. Have a studio and imitate. Well, Nina is listening, so imitate Earth situation. You know, she is there. even non telepaths on, on the colonies and telepaths have a lot of experience of Earth situations. And hey, Nina, Nina's not here. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, so, but she's listening. So. Uh, just practice, you know, being in school, being with friends. So some of the uh, situations are more threatening than others. So play in those situations with parents, with school, with teachers, especially being interrogated and how do you react to that. That should come natural. People get used to that. They kind of, first time it's very scary and you're blocked. And then you react very naturally. Basically, being blocked is a reaction which shows that you're hiding something. If you want to demonstrate that you're straightforward and... Uh, and mainstream, you have to react very quickly. Yes. So now the humans learn to react very quickly. If somebody interrogates, like a police officer, you answer right away, no, I'm a good citizen and I'm doing the right thing because I believe I, I have a right to be stupid, but I'm a good citizen. And that's what <laughs> they have to learn to answer. You have the right to be stupid. Okay. Yes. Uh, so the questions. Are, are we ready for the questions or is there any other news? No questions are fine. All right. Um, I can't read it. These glasses are not good enough. I'm sorry. They're too weak. How is your life there? Uh, do you celebrate stuff? All the time. Is All the your, time. Is your mate's friend nearby? Actually, not today. Say hi to her anyway. Thank you. So, our friend starts his mm-hmm. apprentice, which yes. has other names and which helped us a lot with like, compiling the, the uh, Earth history, actually. We would love to learn more about Earth history, but right now his questions are personal. So, I have Mm, well, his best question is, I was interviewed, if I was interviewed, why don't I remember it? Like Max says, isn't it supposed to be bold enough not to miss it? Yes, it should be, but not always. I will tell you why. Mm-hmm. Some people sense it as a dream and they forget it as well because they didn't think it was real to begin with. Those people are the ones that have a greater imagination, actually. Mm-hmm. So they feel that they weren't interviewed, so it wasn't real, and so it wasn't something that stuck in their frontal consciousness. Okay. It's in your subconscious, though, and it will be brought out. However, another interview, if you do not remember the first one, there will be another. So how how was the interview? How was it? Yeah, was he... I don't know the the reaction of the committee to that. They do not share their responses of how they're going to act on there. So who did interview him? 
He was interviewed by a Pleiadian, though. One? Just one. Uh-huh. So. And, and now they changed the format and they will... Well, they, the format has changed, yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's one... One on one, it's one Pleiadian or one Yigil okay. with one person, and they will tell them to open their eyes. Okay. You will not see their facial features. Mm -hmm. You will, not, but you will see that there is someone there. Mm -hmm. You will not be frightened. Mm -hmm. You will open your eyes and see that there is someone there, and they will tell you to close your eyes. Okay. And they will ask you questions. Mm -hmm. You will respond out loud, and as soon as the interview is over, you will be asleep. And you will not remember the questions. The reason why they have changed it to this interview is for actually several reasons. The others were too distracting, the way they interviewed before, and they were not getting clear responses. Mm -hmm. So they put you in a slight sedation, but aware, enough awareness to answer the questions. And then when you're done answering the questions, they will put you right to sleep. And you will have a nice, restful sleep. And they, this way, the answers are clear. Mm -hmm. And they are understood. And they're not distracted by too many individuals. Or they're not distracted by looking at a being. Mm -hmm. But they are inside their head, concentrating on the answers to the questions. Other questions timed? Answers timed. Do you have a minute to come up with an answer? There are some questions that are timed, but they do not say that they are timed. Oh. But they wait they wait to see how long a response Oh, so you're not limited, so you are free to play. Correct. With. But they time if someone <coughs> answers immediately to a question and it's a positive response, this shows that they're that they have an immediate positive reaction to yes, this. Yes. This is something that they do look for. How many people have been interviewed New Way? Uh, 17. Excellent. How many people have been interviewed Old Way? 24. Wait a second. 24? Mm hmm. But it, n not all the people on your site. I wasn't the impression they'd interviewed about a few hundred. 24 seriously, but they have been with many hundred, yes. Ah. But 24 were actually past the interview, let's put it that way. Past the interview? Yes. All but them. they have not been taken yet, not all of them. Ah. But they have correctly answered many of the questions, or positively answered many of the questions. All right. Was well, regretted on their good answers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Many hundreds have been looked at for sure. All right. Uh, how many people have been uh, have visited through those interviews? Now that is a good question because they have shut off that communication to me. The last time I knew there was four. Uh huh. But th they probably have more now. But four that I know of. Can you request the update? Just a moment. The council was closed, however, I did get in touch with one of the council members. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. There has been one additional taken, so that brings it to five. But they have six more that they are looking at, seriously. So all this, all, all five from the website? All but one. Okay. Good enough, thank you. It gives us a lot of encouragement. Yes, all but one. Uh, Star Seed Apprentice asks, what's my purpose mission, my life purpose mission? He's young. Yes. He has many thoughts about what his mission should be. Mm -hmm. I do not want to push him on a pathway by saying what his, 
his mission will be, but I will tell him this. Mm -hmm. He has talents. Go with his talents and those things that he really enjoys doing. But I see that he is very computer savvy. Mm -hmm. That he has other talents as well. But to know what you are going to do must remain... I cannot tell, tell you exactly what you should do. It's not at my place. Until you have gone through a couple more periods of your life. Does that make sense to you? Yes, you perfect to, sense, yes. You need to grow a bit more before I can seriously talk to you about that. It makes sense, yeah, because, you know, the whole nature of experience, we come here not knowing anything and... Uh, but yes, the, you will be important, thank you. Excellent. Alright, next, uh, star, his star family, both genetically and spiritually. His star family, does he know anything about his star family? I think he already revealed some information in the past, but I don't remember that. Yes. The star family has already been revealed to him. Maybe not. What's his uh, percent of genetic information? Of uh, alien genetics? That I can give you now. Alright. Seven point five. Of which? Of Pleiadian. Excellent. And does he have hybrid children? No. Hybrid brothers, sisters? Not at this time. Okay. Have he been taken? Not that I can be totally sure of. Any specific race or civilization or alliance which watches them, him? Gurkfurt Nier. Yay! Hey, brother. All right. Uh, what if anything pre is preventing my growth? What is what? What if anything is preventing my growth? You are growing at a normal rate. You may not be able to be aware of that because of your body also growing at an interesting rate as well. So you mentioned he is considered for hybridization. Yes. So he is asking who would be doing a hybridization? Would it be Gurk Fitnir or else? It would be Gurk Fitnir, if he allows it. Excellent. I always feel presences around me. Yes. Who are they? Is it my spirit guides? Your spirit guides are around you, but there is also an alien around you as well. It would seem that in this day and age, that is almost normal for those people that believe in creatures from other planets, species from other planets, and they usually send someone to view or observe at this point, especially those with hybrid in them. You do definitely have someone around you. Any hybrids are watched for the elements of their species to show through in you or for you to develop in a way that is other than you should be developing. Uh -huh. And this way they will know what effect the hybridization is having on mankind and as well as how strong um, you develop with their species. Yes. Oh, by the way, we have been visited by this reptilian. Do you have any comments on that? He was an interesting, interesting person, definitely. So we learned a little bit more about the hybridization program of reptilians. Yes, he didn't like that I've been telling people how to handle it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, can you reveal the extent, how many of the hybrids do they have down here? Oh, they they have more now than I had imagined. Can I don't know the number, but I know that there is...
quite a few. Tens, many tens or hundreds? Hundreds. Hundreds. Mostly in America or elsewhere? Everywhere. Uh-huh. I am actually channeling with one of their hybrids in um, Japan. Excellent. So what do you know about the quality of these hybrids? Are they possessed easily by reptilians? I know this, which I've also told the reptilian hybrids, is that a reptilian hybrid in the human species does not develop till later in their life. You will not feel any effects of them until you get older. Okay. Once you get older, your thoughts start changing in that way. That is the main, main area where most humans are affected. Physicality sometimes is affected, but not to the point that they change, but they could become more r rigid acting. But the mind is where the reptilian hybridization is most apparent. They would start getting confused, blockages in the brain, things of that nature. And also, uh, it would tend to frustrate them and make them more angry. Uh, but this will pass. This is their adolescent period which causes all this. Just as you go through adolescence and it, you change a lot. Okay. This it, it happens in adult humans, their adolescence, their physiology starts working later. But does it bring any positive effects? Um, it will eventually, yes, but it's different in each individual. It can be a more clarity about emotions, it could be a clarity about more how they think, their thought patterns. It could be the uh, just a strengthening of character sometimes. Okay. And it, it seems to appear in humans that it strengthens character rather than weakens it. How what about possession? Are they possessed by reptilians? They are not possessed. It's just like any other hybridization. That's who you are. Yeah, I'm blood confused and uh, do I have reptilian DNA? No you don't. You just have an interesting thought process. Uh, okay, or absence of their wolf, of their wolf, yeah. Yes, you do not have any reptilian in you. However, you have different kinds of aliens around you, All right. which may cause this is another thing too, if there are several different kinds of aliens around someone, their vibrations and Frequencies are all different, and this can cause a fuzziness in the brain as well. I mean, because you're picking up on very different kinds of energy all at once. Yeah, I was drained that. yesterday. Just afternoon, I was drained. I, I, you know, I had so many things to do. I wanted to do that, and I just couldn't do anything. I was, I was sensing that this week has been like that for you. Yeah. I sense that uh, you, this week for you was ups and downs. It was uh, it was like in the morning you were down, and then you came up, and then the next morning you're up and you came down, and then why is that? Who is draining the energy? Um, I am not around you enough to know for certain all the things that were happening, but I do have a I do have a technology on you that senses how you feel okay and as well as Jim and a few others all right and it showed me a very inconsistent pattern yeah. with your ups and downs it was almost like you were manic depressant I was depressed yeah yeah you went up and then you were down and then yes you went up, yes then you were down. yes um so i i sense that from my technology that i have monitoring you because you are a concern for me. Thank you. Si it, all right. That was what I said. Simon, uh, another person on the yes, site. Yes, Simon. Uh, his questions are very nice. So, first question: hybrid. If so, to what extent? Simon is a hybrid. Yes. 
Right now, I cannot get a percentage. He's uh, at this moment concentrating on something else. What is uh, the? He does species? fluctuate. Yes. Uh, I, all right. Hold on. He's four percent hybrid. What species? I believe it's you yell. Ah, four percent of you yell is a lot. Yes, it is. Um, second question: Incarnations. Anything you can tell me about this matter that would be beneficial to know for my current life? Could you read that again? I didn't quite understand the question. Uh, any alien incarnations, which would be nice to know for him. Incarnations. Alien incarnations, past lives. Oh. One moment. No incarnations, but visitations. Ah. In past lives you were visited, but not incarnated, no. It was visitations. And they were Pleiadian and Yu-Gi-Oh! visitations. That was two and four lives ago. Uh-huh. And there was a reason for that. You were female in those lives. Now you are male. Oh, so they visited to mate? They visited to understand uh, his sensibilities as a female because in most of his lives he was male. Okay. Next question. Life purpose. If you, if you could shed some light on what I can do to live more positively and joyously. Okay. You must be more organized in the way that you go about becoming more joyful. Ground yourself first. Bring yourself Ground yourself to the earth. Start with your roots. Ground yourself and bring the energy up from Mother Earth to your root chakra. Because you do need grounded. You're, you're here and there and not... And it, it doesn't take effect as well if you're not grounded. So, you need to ground yourself and even though you don't think maybe that you need grounded, there is parts of you that definitely go ground your emotions, ground your spirit, ground, ground the whole being so that you may be working in tandem and energizing your lower chakras to move up through into the mind. You can have stronger chakra power here and here and here, but if if the root is not connected, there you're wasting some energy. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Well, ground yourself. Even though your other chakras may be in, in involved in your process, they work best when your root chakra is grounded. So energize that. Find, bring yourself up from the. Look at your feet and bring yourself up. I've told this to others as well. You must, they are, the grounding process is important. Some people start with the heart chakra and it's like, woo, they're, they're loving and, and wonderful, but they're not making any progress with healing or, or whatever. And they're confused because all this love in their heart and goodness and kindness and it's, it's not grounded, you see. It has to move out in a way that it affects others, but with it, no grounding, it it sort of is like a swirling smoke coming out instead of a ray of light. Does that make sense? Perfect sense. Okay, so you need to just ground yourself first, and then ask me in 10 days, 14 days of your time, if you see any difference. Because if you don't see any difference, then something else needs to be done as well. But I want you to start right there. Great. Uh, next question is, um, Jim looked at your drawings, at uh, Lisa's drawings of your symbols. Can you access them? Can I access them? 
Yeah. You mean, do I know what they look like? Yeah, no. What Lisa drew. Yes, I know what they look like. Uh, can you compare it to what you communicated to us, where she was correct and not? I think she did a rather good job. Uh, it's all humanized, of course. But it's, um, it's definitely... Um, oh, let me grab them. They're back here. All right, so what do we get? Uh, the thank you. How does it look to you? They are humanized, but they are basically correct. I wouldn't wrap the flower around. I would connect them in the branches of each other. I don't get it. How, how can it be done? Well, the flower uh -huh. is wrapped around the tree. That's what you said. I said that they were joined, but they're, it's oh, not wrapped around. the branches joined. Yes. So it was like a snake around the tree. No. It's not like a snake around. This would this would imply that the woman is not equal. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. So to make this equal, you must have them come out of the ground and join. And then they can wrap around. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. All of us misunderstood that idea. Good. So now this. The uh, I, growth and prosperity. Somewhere. I love that interpretation of it. Actually, I do love this. I I think that this is as close as humanly possible you could get. Hmm. Is it the DNA or it's not the DNA? No, it's prosperity. It's growth and prosperity. You see, our waves. Uh, it's water, and and I gave that mm -hmm. connection and. This looks much, if you would cut off, if you would just look at it, uh, divide it in half, mm -hmm. it could be the horizon and the reflection of the water. It would, it's fine with me. I like it. So one of them is water and another one is? Water. They're water. All of them are water? Yes. All right. How about having the peace? That is... You could not get it any better except to make the cloud green. Cloud green. Yes, it's a light <laughs> green. Yes. Light green, of course. Now, that circle, it's a little it's bit... It's gold. So it's a golden ring? It's a golden ring like you might put on your finger. All right, what's inside the ring? There is nothing inside the ring. That's the beauty of it. The beauty is that you're looking through the ring into heaven. Heavenly oh, so peace. So it would be still green cloud behind the ring, in the, inside the ring? No, 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 no. The green cloud with the ring is like a hole through the middle. A hole. So what yes. would be behind it? Like blue sky? It could be white. White? Yes. All right. So how about healing? Except for we don't have that many fingers. But um, yes, oh. that would be right. So it would be one finger less. Yes, it would be one finger less. But that's okay. I would it be thick enough for thicker fingers? Um, it would be pretty close. And I like the shading because I, I just like it. Uh huh. Thank you much. That's, that's all for me. Do you have anything to add to that in symbol wise? No, I think she did a very nice job. For, for a human to understand that would be very good. The only one is the love needs to. I got to it. To be, they in, entangle it in equal area, so that it does not seem like the woman is less. Did you try playing piano with Jim? I did not try that. Try that. We want some alien music, and you already sent some music, and obviously it was very acceptable, very compatible to what we know. How about you play it on the piano and let Jim record that? Okay, that would be interesting. Yeah, Jim plays really well, so you will enjoy using his fingers. Yeah. You can do even more. We'll see. You can do even more playing piano uh, using Jim's finger because he has one finger more on the hand. Yes, that is true. That would be a nice experience. We shall try that. Yes. Now, how about poetry? Do you, did you bring any new poem to read? Oh, you are a poet fanatic, aren't you? Yes. Oh my, well I didn't bring any poetry, no, but 
I could try to find any particular subject you're looking for. Uh, love. Oh, you always do love. Yes. Love. <laughs> well, looking at the tree, that reminds me of love. So, the tree and the flower together brings me the, to the love. All right, let me see if I can find something. Thank you. Can it be short this time? Of course. Thank you. Because <laughs> is there other questions? Tons of questions. There, we should do that instead. All right. I'll and I'll do a poem later. All right. Because I'd have to find one. All right. Well, anyway. Okay. Oh. I do not have a many poems memorized, but I do like reading them. All right, Curly. You remember Curly? Uh, I will just read your questions and you give your best answers. Uh, first, do they come in my dream? Second, do they try to contact another members of my family? Mm -hmm. Have I be been chosen to go to the colony? Uh, am I gone met them? Am I gonna <laughs> met meet them physically and when? Mm -hmm. All right, let me answer some of those questions. All right. First of all, you have not been interviewed yet, and they don't come in your dreams. They do come physically and say, look, and you see them, and then they say, close your eyes. And for some reason, you have to obey. I'm not sure if that's part of their, what they, their sedation or whatever, but you do obey everything they say. I've witnessed a couple of these. Uh, also, yes, your family has been visited, but they are, they are not aware of it, I don't think. You have been visited, but not interviewed. And they were checking something out about your physicality because only certain physically fit and sometimes certain conditions are allowable, but uh, they check you out to make sure that you're physically fit before they interview. And I do not know whether they're going to interview you or not. I do not know what the outcome of their investigation was. So, what was the very last question? Uh, will I and my family be protected? Oh yes, you are protected. During the crisis of 2027. If you take the precise directions, yes, you will be spared. Hmm. Sato asks very typical questions. Uh, frequency and hybrid, hybrid children, that sort of things. 4.5. 4.5 is the vibration. Um, that's not bad. Yeah. Yours has gone up a little, even though you think you've been just. How? I don't yeah, what's, know. What's my frequency? 4.8. Okay, good. I you went up, even though you've been up and down, your frequency... Let me explain something to you about that. Even though you might have felt depressed and up and down, your energy has been positively intended. And this raises your vibration sometimes without you even feeling it. So. Mm. Alright, next question over there. Uh, Sato? It was um, uh, hybridization. Um, is he hybrid? What percent? He's yes, four percent. Which DNA? Grail. Grail. Interesting. Has he been taken? No. Um, He's been visited, but not taken. Visited by Grails. Yes. They they have a way to, to do this now that they don't have to take abduct. They can okay. do it. Yeah, they can do it without abduction now. Um did he, for the last ten years or so. In which age it, in which age did he get his DNA? Uh during the birth or during the inception or later? During the inception. Uh huh. Are his Relatives also are uh, hybridized? Mm, one. One is, yes. Brother, sister? Mother. Uh huh. And this was quite a while ago. How old are, is this person? 
Amnoklu. Because he was not abducted. He was given the DNA, or take, given the DNA through conception, and it was a while ago. Was his mother abducted? His mother was abducted, yes. Okay. So he is monitored mostly by grails or other species? Grails, you yield, and occasionally a clare. But they're all gray species. Great. Um, any more information that can be useful to him, like in interviews, stuff of that sort? Just a moment. When you are interviewing, give concise, intelligent answers, which you do basically, but there are times when you tend to talk a little too much. So, Cut back your answers a little bit and smile more. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great help. Kenneth. Uh, he asks about frequency and percent of hybrid. Frequency. What was his name? Kenneth. Kenneth. 4.35. Uh-huh. And is he hybrid? 2%. Uh, which DNA? Reptilian. Interesting. Uh, does he have hybrid children? No. I see. Next would be our friend Michael Logani. He has uh, his side and he's very active on our side, so he's a big contributor. He, first question, which alien races contributed to my genes? To his genes? Genes. DNA. Well, to your DNA, yes. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. You are a double hybrid. Uh-huh. Yuyel and Pleiadian. Wow. What percent of Yuyel? 2 percent uh -huh. and 5 percent Pleiadian. Interesting. They do try different amounts of each to see which comes through uh -huh. more dominantly. Even though, you see, Yuyel is not, even though Yuyel is very, very much the same as human, it does have some other traits that come through because they have such a different look as we do. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and Pleiadian as well can come in as a look as well. well it's same with Reptilia, all of them actually, but um, more so with Yayil, it seems that their, their look, their, uh, their shape and look comes through more than other DNAs, uh -huh. which is interesting. So at which stage was he hybridized? Was it during conception or later? It was actually later for him. Ah. Because of the double, the dual activity, he was visited and... He, can you remember a time when you lost about four hours of time? If you lost about four hours of time, that's about how long it takes for a double... a double. I see. And they would do it at once. Both. At which age? Um, he was five or six. Okay. Uh, what? How can I? Five. How can I help to uh, the ascension? And what is my mission? Helping the ascension is keeping positive intention for all those things you do. Helping others, enlightening others with knowledge that you might have with positive activity. Helping those that, and not expecting to receive anything in return, is always a huge help for the whole world. The energy that comes from helping those without expecting anything in return is like a diamond being cut. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, third, who is my soulmate? What is her name and country? I cannot give you that information. That is not for me to tell you. You must discover your soulmate. If I were to tell you who your soulmate was and you ran into her, you would actually not become soulmates because you would chase her off because you were a stalker. So, <laughs> or or actually be so in, intent on being with her that 
it wouldn't happen. So this is something that has to come naturally. Um, I do know who she is, <laughs> but I cannot tell you who she is. Great. Does that make sense to you, though? I want you to understand, I'm not telling you because I mean. I'm not telling you because it wouldn't work otherwise. Great. All right. Uh, how can I activate my connection to elementals? How it may contribute to others? To elementals meaning what? Oh. Like trees, bushes. That sort of thing. Elementals are something mysterious which I didn't study, but people mention them all the time. Meditation. Fire is one of elementals, but I don't, don't know more. I'll tell you. Meditation connects you with everything. Everything. And if you want to specify a meditation to go to elemental levels, you may do so. It may not happen on the first or second or third try, but once your mind is understanding and your spirit guides are in tune, you will be able to connect with the elementals. And when you do that, you will find a whole new mysterious world that will intrigue you beyond your imagination. Thank you. Now, our shiny friend Pamela, she is so bright. Yes. She's asking if she's a hybrid. <laughs> Pamela, Pamela. And she is. Uh huh. Can you tell me? She's very high hybrid, actually, about 9.5%. But it's all Pleiadian. Uh huh. It's all Pleiadian. Yeah, she is very much into Pleiadians. It's all Pleiadian. Uh huh. Uh, what frequency is she now? Four point. She fluctuates. What's the range? Well, right now, I don't know what the range is at this moment, but she's at a 4.4, 4.4 4 or 4.45, somewhere in that area. I was under the impression that she's around 5, but... Yes, she's dropped some. Mm -hmm. Yes, I remember. She was very high. It must have been a, a very, very positive time, but wait a minute. Yeah, right now it's about 4.5 or 4.45. Okay. Which uh, is still very high. Don't be discouraged. There's just something, maybe you're going through a uh, something in your life that's causing you to grow and it will come back to you. It will, that vibration will come back. Great. Thank you. And if you were at a five, which I believe you were, I think we did not announce that though. Um, is it appropriate now when she's down? <laughs> I will tell everybody that at one time she was at five and now she's down a little bit, but she will come back up. All right. Don't worry, it's, some, it's something physiological, I believe. Number two, was I ever abducted? No. Why am I having distorted dreams? Um, you are surrounded by two different aliens, well, so not surrounded, but there's two different aliens around you and that causes distorted dreams sometimes. So one is a Pleiadian and, uh -huh. and one is a uh, Yigil and they are both from Grokfiknir. Alright, alright, yeah. good, good, good. C could you ask them to reveal their names? Sheg is the Yigil, Sheg. Menonstrepok is the Pleiadian. Menonstrepok. Did I say it right? Menonstrepok. Something like that. Menonstrepok. Yeah, Menonstrepok. Yes. <laughs> uh, for are higher dimensional beings contacting me? In yes, they're trying to contact you. I don't think they've made contact complete yet. Uh, Nick James ask, asks first, how big are real draconians? That depends on which species of draconian there. There are a few different kinds of draconians, but they're actually, they're born large and they stay large. Um, Give us a range. Some of them Okay, they're 
egg-borne creatures. They, All right. And they're, um, once they come out of the egg, they become, they stretch out and become very large. And they're, they, they're born at eight and nine feet long and only get like maybe four or five feet bigger. So they're actually most of their size at birth. So they do get a little bigger. Do they really eat humans? Uh, they did at one time. They do not now. On Earth? There are no draconians on Earth except for an, on a subculture under the Earth. There's one subculture under the Earth of draconians. In this dimension? In this dimension. Draconians under the Earth? Under the Earth. Under the Earth. How many of them? There is one civilization, not a huge civilization, probably several hundred. Several hundred draconians under the earth, yes. even here. Yes. And you don't know that. No, they're several miles down. Wow. Are they civilized? That much more than they used to be, yes. They would not... They have actually made contact with the surface of the earth. There are, there are ways for them to do that. Uh -huh. And there are one person that I know of that has Tragonian DNA in them. Ah. Uh, are they more aligned with our leaders military industrial complex or not? They have rejected your military. Good for them. Good for us. Uh, are they in contact with our friends? Only very rarely and reluctantly. Ah. But I know of one, they do actually make contact with reptilians more frequently. Uh, good ones or bad ones? Uh, both. Both ones. They are not judgmental about that kind of thing. Because they are not really very partial to earthlings except to think they're delicious but um, partial meaning what does it mean partial partial means they're not on their side necessarily ah so they're not that benevolent they're not they don't care one way or the other they're not out to destroy the human race but ah. yet they're not here to save it as well they're, but they're not benign. They can be violent. So. Ah. But the uh, the reptilians they seem to be re relatively friendly with. Yes. So the draconians are more like dinosaurs physiologically. Do they walk on four feet? They walk on. They do have four. They have wings. They actually are. Fly. Do they, they have space for flying under the earth? Oh yes, there's a huge, huge area that they're in. A several, cavern? A cavern? Several hundred miles of cavern there. In our dimension? Yes. And draconians live in a big hole. Do they have sun there? They don't need sun. They, they're, they do have um, some luminous rocks there, but their vision is not good on, on the surface anymore. But under there, do they have? Do they use light to see? Very little. It's luminous rock and things of that nature. How can they, can they fly if they don't see? They have vibrational, just like bats. Oh, they're like big bats. Yeah. They but can bats, do sonic bouncing off the walls. Uh, bats things. have sonic. No, no, they have they're mammals, and draconians are they're not mammals. No. Are they relatives to dinosaurs? Um, I do not know. I cannot answer that. Because dinosaurs have four legs and mm -hmm. our mammals have four legs and draconians, if they have four feet and wings, it would make six dexterities, right? Yes. Which makes them more like insects. And that's probably why they get along with the reptilians and the insectoids as well. <laughs> Sophisticated. What can I say? <laughs> so we have a lot of literature about draconians. It's a big part of our culture. Oh yes, they were on Earth many, many centuries ago, on the top of the Earth. But and you know, that was only that was a subculture of the culture that's under the Earth. 
So they're more under. They more prefer to be under the earth. What would they eat? Young girls. They wouldn't sexually be attracted to them. No. Just because they're there's tastier? legends about that. That's all. They just taste here. <laughs> no, that's what. That's what they were offered. That's what the culture thought they wanted. So. Oh, all right. Because young girls were just as tasty as anybody else. So. All right. Uh, what is the significance of white draconian? Of what? White draconians. I do not know the significance. Is there a white draconian? I don't know. I have not seen a white draconian. What's the color of the draconians under the earth? They're black. All right. And br dark brown. And some of our, them are a really ugly gray. Ooh. All right. <laughs> Really ugly black gray, it's charcoal y color. Alright. Is a dragon and a draconian two different things? Dragon and draconian. They are two different things, yes. Uh huh. But um, dragons and draconians have similar looks. But they're two different things. And they might be actually relatives of one another, but I've really not studied that, so. Uh, can you ask if anybody else wants to come because we are running out of time and I hope that Yahweh would show up or Jesus or any of those um, important figures. Okay, well, is that all the questions? I'm going to go then. I have lots more questions, but we are running out of time. If anybody is in the line, then we would allow them to go. I will say goodbye then. Thank you, Lakesh. It was a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> I am the one known as Mohammed. Hey Mohammed, thank you for coming through. Welcome. It is a joy. Welcome. I have been here before. What would you like to know about your ascension and your your communication? Introduce yourself more. We have a very distorted view of what you are. I am a man, but I am also a spirit. Excellent. I am a connection between heaven and earth. Uh-huh. I am the earth. And I am the sky. And I am connected with joy. Excellent. Are you just I, just the spirit of a human or are you more than that? I am more than that. Are you a brother of Jesus? I am a relative, yes. Did you come from outside of our creation, from all the universe, all what we know? Maybe you're coming from outside of that. I came from outside and within it. Are you a brother of creator? I am part of creation that is put here uh -huh. and then taken away so that we may all learn to be together. Excellent. So the main problem now is Jews, Muslims, Arabs yeah, and so. Christians. Yes. They're Tell us all more. one color in your rainbow. They're all joy. They are all part of what makes your world your world? Uh, I am joyful to be here. It's, it's my joy for us too. When you were a man, you did fight a lot, right? You united a big empire, and which took over the, you know, a big part of the of the uh, Europe. Yes. And even Africa. But you know that the knowledge of how to do that came from without. Uh -huh. and came within. Uh -huh. And we pull this into ourselves when it's necessary. You see, someone had to take a leadership position, yes. and it was the sky, uh -huh. to unite the earth with the sky. Yes. We had to build a relationship, and sometimes relationships are confusing and panicked, and, yes. and not all connected. But, in the end, 
in the end, the conclusion was joy and connection mm -hmm. and life. Mm -hmm. And no more war after that when I was alive. Mm -hmm. I, I read, I tried to read Quran. Quran. Did you write it? I helped to write it. God. Uh-huh. Yes. It was so boring. It was all over that God it's is not, so great and, you know, we have to... It's not boring when you read it with excitement. Uh-huh. When you read it with joy and when you want to read it. If you're reading it as a document, it will be boring. If you read it as a book of literature, it will be boring. If you read it in the spirit of which it was written, it will be enlightening. It will be full of joy. It will be full of understanding for you to bring in, you see. But you have to understand how to read something before it makes sense to you, before it enlightens you. You must read it in a way that brings it into you. Mm -hmm. So most of our listeners are light workers who yes. rejected the mainstream religion. And now we have light workers religion, which is mostly what aliens tell us. Now, what is wrong with mainstream religion? How can we merge all that together? Mainstream religion is too much of one person's idea of what should be, instead of taking in what is. Mm -hmm. You see, what is, is darkness and light. Mm -hmm. They have joined them together and confused them together. They say that love is great, but yet they reject others. That is not love. They say that they are caring. They will help the poor, but yet they don't love the poor. They will not go and help them personally. They'd rather write a check or send them money or a bit of food. And then they feel like they're not guilty anymore of rejecting the poor. What is wrong with mainstream religion is it's not involved with what they need to be involved with. They need to love. They need to share what they have. But they keep it all for themselves. And they say they love, but yet they'll, they will crucify someone that they, that they feel is a sinner. You do not crucify the sinner. You hold them close and let them feel the love and joy within your heart and then release them into the world and if they continue to sin then that is what they choose but you are not showing them a way out of their sin oh you say salvation but that does not work with some people because why? because they see your actions and they see and hear your words and your words are not pure and your actions are not pure and your 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 light is not shining you are saying that it's shining and you are saying good words but there is no action behind it and the action of the heart brings those to you brings food to the hungry, clothes to the poor, like your Bible and the Quran and those things, those books tell you. But these people are not acting upon their beliefs. They are acting upon what others would like them to see in them. But you know what? Everyone sees what is there. If they don't see it now, they will see it later. If the love is not there, they will see there is no love. If the giving is not there, they will see there is no giving. When the actions are not there, the truth is somewhere else. Do you understand? Yes. The truth is what everyone will see. You're close to God. How do you see God? He is 
light, love, joy, understanding. He makes me laugh. Oh. He is a joyful man. Or energy, I should say. You see men. I see everything. Is it male or female? Oh, who cares? One day it could be male, one day it could be female. It doesn't matter if he's male or female. What matters is that he acts upon how he feels. Does he act? Yes, he acts. Much. How does he do that? He brings more people to him in a way that no one can understand. Because you see the light. Can you feel it? Can you feel the light? You can if you know how. If you feel the joy, you feel the light. Because joy and light, love and understanding are all of who he is. And that is when you know what the light is. When you can feel the joy, when you can understand it, and you can emote it and give it to others. That is our God. That is what he does. He works through us all so that we may be outward, giving outward, not drawing in like a black hole. You don't want that. You know why? Because you bring in all the bad as well as the good. But when you give out, you get rid of the bad and you transfer the good. Do you understand? Yeah, that's a great uh, advice. So, to love and to give and to live simply and not care about the materials around you. See, you, that's another thing I see. Man, he will grab a hold of his family in love and all his possessions or her possessions in love, but yet none is going out to the world. The world needs love, the whole world, not just this small little section that you live in. The whole world needs love. When you walk out in the street, can you feel that you are projecting joy and love and light to others? Do you smile? Do you say hello? Do you even acknowledge there's someone there to someone else? This could be a revelation that they are actually there. Some people walk around this earth and they feel like they're not even a person. How sad. Let's make them feel like people. They are loved. There's good traits in all. In all. And of course, we want to push out those things that would cause us to be l low. Because why would you want to be? Why? When joy is high, why wouldn't you want joy and happiness and light? That's what you would want. But you don't even know what you want. You see, you confuse joy with things and money and that. Oh, gimme, gimme. That's not joy. That's gimme, gimme. That's the material. That's the earth. That's part of who we are, though. Who you are, and who I was. Do you see? But we grasp onto the joy, and move up from the lower chakras to the higher chakras, until we attain the end of your life. And then you move on to a greater joy, and a greater life, and a greater existence. To be born in to learn greater things so that you can help the universe grow. You see, because when you go out as a spirit, you're not just doing nothing. You are showing the universe light. You are going into the sun and pushing that light out in the way of joy and understanding as much as you can. You see, spirits work too. We have to. Otherwise, you would be dead. Mm -hmm. There would be no life. So we work for joy, for understanding, and for those things that help mankind ascend and grow. So when you read your books, 
Read it with love. Read it to push into your mind that there are things to come out of it. It comes in, it goes out. Not just goes in and say, hmm, interesting. That helps no one but yourself. But to push out the knowledge and understanding of goodness, love, peace, and joy. Yes, that's when your reading will be viable. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. How do you pray? Give us advice. Before we were asking God for help and hope that He would bring us whatever we need, yes. how do we do it now? We meditate, for one. Mm -hmm. You must meditate to find the places that are confused and are not bringing in light and taking out light. This is the joy of meditation, is to become more like God. You see, you are going, becoming more like light because you are acting like light when you meditate. Mm -hmm. You are moving out. You are bringing in. And my advice to be more like God is to be who you are in your perfect self. Do not lie. Be your honest, honest self. And whoever that is, be that person. Can you share with us an updated story of creation? The creation story is sort of <laughs> old and simplistic. Now we know about dinosaurs, now we know about genetics mm. and aliens. Can you tell us a story which would involve all of that? Simple one. I could, but I'm not going to. And all I'll right. tell you why. The creation is done, it is over, it's past, and it's not important to your ascension. It's not important to joy, but one day I will be able to sit with you in light and tell you more things about creation than you ever wanted to know. <laughs> but right now, my job, my work, is to bring joy out of you. And not the creation. How do you work? <laughs> are, are you involved in our current reality? Are you visiting people? Are you incarnating? Are you appearing among people? I am not appearing. I have, I have come to some people as I have come here. Mm -hmm. But I am not actively a spirit on your planet, mm -hmm. except in this capacity. Mm -hmm. But I am happy to be here. Are you affiliated more with Muslims than others? I am affiliated with everyone. I am not more affiliated with one more than the other anymore. Perhaps at a time, there was a time when they would affiliate me with one particular group of people or another. But you know, at this time, all those groups are sweeping together. Those that understand know that God is God. And there is no difference between my God and your God and that God and this God. This is the God of creation. This is the one we're talking about. And he is joyful. And I am joyful. But let me tell you, I do not belong to one sect or portion of people any longer. Thank you. Can you give us a blessing? Yes. Thank you. What kind of blessing? Do you want a rising blessing? Yes. I do not. I just become the joy. And I don't need to bring out special words for special things. You just feel it and it becomes what it is. Because in the spirit, even though we do pray and have our blessings and words, they are not necessary as the outflowing of joy to God. And that is a blessing in itself because you get back a hundred times more than what you give. When he feels that joy coming to him from you, you get it back in many, many ways. So that's what I, that is the kind of blessing that I would like to share. Um, but if you want words, yes. we can say words. Say words. But 
the words don't mean much as much as the actions. Let me make that very clear. But we can say to God, thank you and praise you for who you are and what you've done and where you've been to take us out of where we came from. And we ask that you just lift us more and more each day, that we may become closer to you and more a part of the reality of giving, the reality of love, the reality of light. Yes, we pour out ourselves to you to become more like you. So when you fill us, oh, we're overwhelmed. And I want to just say thank you for this time with you. I must go now. Thank you very but much. I am joyful for the movement of the people of this planet to a higher plane of understanding of what light, love, and joy are. Thank you. Much honor. Blessings and amen. Amen. Is it Jim? Yes. Hey, Jim. Yes. <laughs> How are you? Good. Oh. You want to sit, lay down, whatever you like. Yes, yeah, so I'll just lay down for a minute if you don't right. mind. I'm going to take a sip of tea. So, uh, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we stopped receiving the donations. Last week, no donations came through. Uh, and our store brought us $8 in sales, uh, in uh, income. We sold one thing. So, please give us your support. I enjoy it. And for me, the site is a big part of my life. Already mm -hmm. for you know, since the, since its existence, yes, it's a big part of my life, and uh, I I very appreciate appreciate very much your support and uh, help, moral, energetic, and material help just keeping the site up. Thank you very much. Perfect. Now Jim has to run, so I close. Have a good day. Goodbye. Have a good day. Thanks.